Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Spiritual Fluffers. Uh, Amy and Jason here with you. We're continuing our series on love, yeah. what's love got to do with it, and all about love, and today's is everyone loves you. How is that possible? We've just been talking in all of these different episodes about love levels and self-loathing versus bliss and nirvana and where do you fit in the scale and and what we've talked about is that I can take decide and, and take a compliment to determine how much I love myself work on techniques to improve my love for myself so if I'm if I'm going through all of that just to try to figure out how to love myself how on earth can I love you how does everybody love everybody if we're all dealing with this I mean, I think part of it is, again, we're doing levels. And also people, we're all hot messes. We're all experiencing this world through different matrix, different points of view. We all have damages and baggages that we're carrying along with us. Uh, speaking of, if you haven't already seen our episode on Tired of Being a Hot Mess, please check that one out. We'll put it in the link below. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, we're, we're all coming at a, a damaged level. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, the reason why we bring up this topic is we're still seeing ourselves as 3D, ego-driven people, and we are always going to see ourselves that way. And because we see ourselves that way, we perceive ourselves how others perceive us. And unfortunately, the human condition, you can meet nine nice people and then one person out of 10 is horrible to you and guess which one you remember. Yeah. This is the same thing with your experience of you know, reality. And unfortunately, usually, if you have a damage significant other or a damaged parent you'll start to actually perceive yourself how they perceive you and they actually do love you they just don't know how to love or they're loving so let's rework because you and i are working really hard on not using negative language yeah, it's, tough. it's hard no it is because <laughs> we're all conditioned to think in duality good bad right wrong mm -hmm. right you know broken whole and what we're trying to do is really break out of that so it's not so much that someone has been damaged so to speak but it's the conditioning mm -hmm. so if we think of the ego as a central processing unit like a computer the coding that has gone into that um, system is the lens through which the whole rest of the experience is seen through. Yep. So if a child has experienced child abuse growing up, that child's whole coding experience has been that abusive uh, world, right? Yes. And so the whole way that that child then becoming an adult views the world is through that abuse, that lens of what we call abuse down here. And it is. Yes. I mean, <clears throat> and and so because of that, it means any love expressed from that now adult can only ever come through that lens that as long as someone stays unconscious. Because that's what we've been talking about through all of this series of love. Our hope is that we're trying to help you understand this is real and this exists so that you can actually be an active participant in your consciousness, in your love, in your happiness. And a lot of the people that are holding us back are unfortunately our significant significant people in our lives who actually did hurt us and unfortunately what happens is they probably hurt us once and then we're, they liked us this much but we remember the one time where they hurt us right there's also and also that person we tend to remember and ex remember the world through a negative lens and we'll remember the one person that was most negative to us and unfortunately those people until you get good at it, those people are usually living rent-free in your head. Mm -hmm. And our goal is to excise that. Yeah, to get those people out of your head to understand that while they, what you experienced with them, what they did to you, your perception was wrong. It was painful. However, it doesn't have to remain in your psyche and your lens for the rest of your life. And part of the process is understanding them. There's a difference between being understandable and acceptable. Understandable is this person came at me this way. Accepting it is actually enabling it. Understanding it's saying, okay, I'm processing this. I'm processing this. Most right. of us, we don't process. We analyze ourselves to death. We analyze the situation to death, but we don't process it. Part of processing it is saying, everyone's, I'm flawed. Everyone's flawed. We're all, we're all living this human condition. 
completely through the lens that we were raised with and and yes we had a choice but some of us you know they're unaware and that's we can get mad at them for it but you can't really get mad at a dog for barking and there's some people that you can't really get mad at for being that right again not acceptable right not condoning it yeah not saying it's good not saying it doesn't hurt um, I have a past relationship who was psychologically, verbally, and emotionally abusive. Mm. Um, I understood why he did what he did. I, he came from a childhood set of childhood experiences that developed him as an adult, and that's how he viewed the world. And for a period of time, it was acceptable that I be in that relationship mm-hmm. and that I be treated that way. Mm-hmm. While I understood it for a period of time, I allowed it to be acceptable. Mm -hmm. And that was because my own love levels were so low. And I believed that I was deserving of it on Mm -hmm. some levels. And then as I began to understand that I was more valuable, beginning to push against that ego that's saying, oh, you're a narcissist or, oh, you should continue to stay and suffer. It will be helpful for this other person if Mm -hmm. you tolerate through this. And I began to be an active participant in creation of my own happiness was when I pulled away from that Mm -hmm. and then was able to process. I can see why it happened and understand, no, it was actually never acceptable. It's not ever acceptable for someone to treat you poorly. But again, we want to get to the point of understanding it so we can grow from it. Because if we don't understand it... You repeat it. I mean, I know I have. We all do. Yeah. I mean, we all are like, why did this happen? Okay, well, I need to go back to it until I understand it. And that's really why we're going back to it. It becomes an addiction because we want, at a soul level, on a spiritual level, we want to understand it. And we want to actually say, no, this isn't acceptable. And I want to understand this to the point that I can fix it. And then, Exactly. And so I think what we're trying to do with this series on love is try to get you to a place where you understand... First of all, what love is, what love levels are, where your love level is, some ideas on how to improve your love level, and then this recognition that everybody is on that exact same journey and everyone is loving you to the very best of their abilities. So really, fundamentally, everybody does love you. Mm -hmm. They're just doing it to the very best of their abilities. And, And I've always heard people say, sometimes your best efforts are just not good enough exactly and that and that's acceptable or at least it becomes acceptable don't stay with the person right but it becomes acceptable um because again you're living in this reality of no that's okay they're not supposed to be at that level you should almost feel bad for them because they're experiencing they're experiencing love in a way that there's a they know there's a higher form because everyone knows there is a higher form of love but they could never get there. And they're yeah. usually deeply unhappy. And again, our goal is to not really care about them or your relationship with them, but also just recognize that you're viewing yourself through their reality and we want you to break that matrix. We want you to actually view yourself through your through own. Through your own reality and work with your own lens, what you were raised with, the conditions that you've experienced in your relationships. Begin to, to take those lenses away, those fractal lenses away, mm-hmm. so that you can have a clear view of what who you are, who your soul is, what love is, how you'd like to interact with others, what are boundaries that you're willing to accept or not accept with others, right? Well, and also, like, once you recognize, like, you are viewing yourself through those people's eyes, you can also work with it. You can actually go back and experience, like, go back to those traumatic experiences and say, oh, my gosh, I forgive you because you are this way. And that's what the the Church of Manual people were doing with the murderer, is they were forgiving the person, not because they thought, oh my God, this guy's a wonderful. No, they didn't condone it. No, they were saying that because they don't don't want to have that person live rent-free in their head. Mm -hmm. And you can go back and view the trauma and say, I forgive you and I feel sorry for you. And that, it releases them. Also, you recognize that the negative people in your life are actually affecting your love level, unfortunately, more than the positive people are. Surround yourself with positive people. Yes. Are you still going to hang out with negative people? Yes, because unfortunately in this anger porn world, quite a few of us, we think we're positive, but we're not. (laughs) Um, And again, most people are unaware of their own reality. Yeah. 
if people are unaware of their own reality, how can you actually be mad at them? Right. Again. It's almost like the the it's almost again like the child, right? Children who stumble into something they don't know what they've stumbled into, kind of thing. Well, and I would say, unfortunately, the majority of adults in this world probably did emotionally stagnate at the t- 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 tantrum. Stage. Yeah, as a child. Yeah, they, and they never got past that. They're like, wait, I, I got what I wanted through tantruming. Why, yeah. Why am I? Re- why would I mess this up? Yeah. <laughs> this Just strategy. Keep tantrums your whole life. <laughs> this and get what this you want. strategy works really, really well. <laughs> why you want me to stop? Um, <laughs> and unfortunately, again, like we're joking about it. Does that make it? Understandable, yes. It doesn't make it acceptable. No. Like, no. Yeah. And yeah. that—that's what we'd say. And again, would you get mad at a dog for barking? Well, and the other thing that um, is relevant in this too is that as you are actively working on upping your own love levels, you this construct around um, you are the average of sort of you're the average energetic vibration or level of the five closest people that you spend time with. Mm-hmm. So if you are surrounded by a, a group of negative individuals, then you know that your own love levels are constantly being pulled downward. So so actively engaging with people whom you may even be a little envious of that you've seen and you know your ego is like, oh, that person's so narcissistic and they're always about themselves. But they actually might love themselves a great deal and they might do so in a very healthy way and they take really good care of themselves. They eat well, they work out, they avoid you know things that aren't good for them kind of thing. And I know I can personally say I've been envious of those kinds of people but have had to actively work to integrate them into my life so that I'm actually upping my own average, so to speak. Well, envy is like, it's the ego, again, putting it in a negative way of saying, I want to be somewhat more like this person. Mm -hmm. It's saying, hey, that person has something to bring to the table. I need to learn from it. That's really, I mean, all emotions are basically mnemonic. (coughs) They evolved as mnemonic things. So, hey, remember this, this is important. Yeah, you're supposed to hate. No, no, that's actually just a way to say, don't do this again, or stay away from that person, or get the heck, get the heck out of here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Again, and then they evolved in these almost self-torturing mechanisms that the ego uses. Um, if you are into that at all, we've got the uh, playing chess with yourself episode that you'll enjoy that talks about exactly that. that yeah. you, and our it, ego loves to do that to us. And again, unfortunately, why we're talking about this is when you start the process of loving yourself, what's going to actually get in your head is past relationships and past people saying that you're not good enough. Yeah. And there, it's not them, it's your perception of them. It's the old tapes in your head that are looping through. And so it's a matter of us trying to help you delete those tapes and and put new, play new tapes down that are filled with a, a higher level of love for yourself and others. Yeah, because again, uh, this again, you're playing chess against yourself. So, guess so let's set the right? board up right so that everybody wins every time in a positive way. Yeah. Instead. Well, plus once you start loving yourself, then there's going to be the secret self that's going to say, "Oh no, no, you need to start. You, don't you need to that. balance it. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm in control here." And again, that's why we're talking about this. That's why. I mean, again, if the church of manual people can forgive a murder, I'm pretty sure you can forgive yeah. other people. And again, they didn't do it because they were like, oh my God, let's make this person this wonderful. This is great. They yeah. did it because they no longer wanted to have that person live rent-free. And also on a spiritual level, they recognize that the human condition, unfortunately for some people, goes pretty... Dark. Dark. Mm-hmm. Uh, and again, like it's also the reason why you know Jesus died on the cross again right. even if you don't believe in that right you believe in it because it happens on a daily basis like why do we care about sick people in china yeah we don't yeah like but we do because it's an i am presence we're all going through the same human experience and again we're all going through it in a slightly different way but we're all kind of still set up with the same hard wire right yeah and the bottom line is that everybody loves you. Yeah. Everybody loves you. Everybody, we all love one another. We're going to do an episode on the I am presence and the oneness and construct around that too to help you get it. But this is really sort of the closing of our series on love and love levels and upping your love level. And we hope you've enjoyed listening and talking about it with us. And, and hopefully you're commenting below 
any ideas or thoughts that you have, reactions, and it's okay. Some of this stuff is kind of heavy, and yeah. um, it's hard for us to talk about it because we don't want to offend anybody. But at the same time, we're truly trying to help people wake up to who they are and become active participants in their happiness. Yeah, and give people uh, tactics. And sometimes the tactics might not work for everyone. And also sometimes receptive state. If you're not in a receptive state for it, you're not going to alter your perception of reality again it's not easy to rewrite your matrix it's not easy to do what we're talking to do we respect everyone and we respect everyone at their at their level like we don't again we're not judging people on any of this because again everyone's going through the same thing yeah totally so make sure and put comments below um, give us the thumbs up if you're liking it and um, we'll see you on the next episode